matches at the Premiership. Very interesting! Always going to be the keepers. I do not believe what I'm seeing here. Premier League classics. He's won it! How good was that? Mo Salah has signed a new deal. They have now officially announced the signing of Erling Haaland. That's a good try. Oh, brilliant goal! What a goal! Would you believe it? Oh, what a free kick! Oh, this is amazing! Good evening. Yep, you've guessed it. You've asked for it. And we're back. It's Match Trevor Day, and we've got the latest round of Premier League games before they're sadly interrupted by the World Cup. Our first game tonight is the big one between Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool. A packed house took place for what turned out to be an absolutely pulsating match. Holberg into Kane. Lovely son! Oh, what a fantastic save! Match two for us tonight is Chelsea versus Arsenal. Always a classic in this London derby. But could Arsenal maintain their league form and continue on as title challengers? Aubameyang. Aubameyang passes to Sterling. Oh, it saves. Ramsdale, that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Plus, we will round up all the other goals of all the other matches taking play on this uh, Barclays Premier League weekend. The Premiership, hey, I bet you've all missed it. I certainly have, but it's delighted to be back and hopefully you can see more from us as the rest of the season progresses. But tonight it's time for us to focus on one match and one match only. That's a big one tonight between Spurs and Liverpool. It isn't necessarily a game which will strike you as the most classic match that's taken place beforehand, but this season it takes on an air of significance. Spurs aren't playing very well, stand just a few points off the top of the league, or so may be believed. But there has been talks about some fractures and some fault in Antonio Conte's style of football. As for Liverpool, it's been a disastrous season for them. That seventh season itch for Jurgen Klopp seems very prevalent today, and Liverpool look to be trying finding life, struggling without Sadio money, as a squad that has stood the test of time for so long seems to be struggling at the moment. We will come out of this on top. Your match commentator for this one is Trevor Davis. Well, the dramatic drop of form for Liverpool has put them certainly on the back burner in this contest. The Liverpool side that has shown such vigour and fight in recent years is showing a side a bit stale and lacking of that killer instinct. Under Antonio Conte, Tottenham Hotspur have turned their season around and apparently are two or three signings away from being championship contenders, if you'll believe the papers. But one thing they're certain of is Champions League football. Both sides will be in the last 16 of the tournament. It could be a real classic here this evening, right here in the heart of North London. For Liverpool, it really is a make or break. They're closer to the relegation zone than the Champions League for next season. For Spurs and everyone else here inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they think they're It's as uh, close to a sellout as you could expect. Two sets of fans here in wonderful voice. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium looking about as pristine as it possibly could. Salah into Darwin Nunes. Jordan Henderson. Alexander Arnold was supporting. Fabinho is played in. Here is Salah dancing away easily. Darwin, Salah blocks. Oh! Thiago had the effort. What a start that nearly was. Holberg. Priceless winning goal against Marseille. Here is Emerson Royale. Lovely ball into Kane. Square to Son. Oh, that's a really fine save by Allison. Diving across and making a priceless one on one save. Excellent goalkeeping. Had to be alert there. 20 minutes gone. Henderson. Liverpool trying to run through. Darwin Nunes trying to run it past Ben Davis. Mira to Holberg. Into core. Lining one up here for Son to run into. He's got the legs of Alexander Arnold. Does not have the finish. Son bursting through for Tottenham Hotspur. One on one. And he just seemed to freeze and panic in the moment. Such unlike the prolific marksman that he is. 
Holberg back to Kudietsky. Royal offering support. Robertson spotting the passing. Nunes. Jota. Just sat there in the area. Jota's found room. He may not need him. Davis clears it away. Might be a second chance for Jota. Lovely pass. Thiago. Nunes. And Henderson strikes. It looked as if the chance had gone. But Jordan Henderson. Oh, I wouldn't be doing that in front of the home support. You thought there that the chance had fashioned back when Nunes' flick hadn't found Salah. But Salah, to his credit, saw the run of Henderson. And that was an unstoppable hit right past Lloris. Conte frustrated, but Liverpool up and running. Thiago. Salah. And to go across. His son. Lovely little one to a better cross. Son comes again. Perisic. Kane. Kudieski. Yes! It's one apiece. What a brilliant hit. Kudieski finished fantastically there. This is worth seeing again. A rifling strike. Right past Allison, and Liverpool's lead lasted just two minutes. We've got a match on now. It's Kudieski. Holberg into Kane. Lovely son! Oh, what a fantastic save! Brilliant work by Kane. Wonderful effort and a fine save. Really good football now. Still, he was caught there by Robertson. Very late lunging challenge. What will the referee do here? Just a yellow. Probably the right decision. Kudietsky here. Looks like he was caught. And you can see just reason why it was a terrible late challenge. Don't think you can defend that, Jürgen. on over this three in the wall lined up Son is there five on the edge of the area for Spurs oh but for a brilliant header it could have been another strike and another goal the header was looping in. What a brilliant stop it was. Great set piece from Conte's side. Perisic is over for the corner. Spurs won't want half time right now. Oh, another save again. Son diving in. Allison to the rescue. What a great header. Call him Thunderbird too because he's saving everybody today. Virgil van Dijk into Jota. Oh, it's a lovely ball. Mo Salah! Got under it. Not to be. And just three minutes of time added on. Emerson Royale. Bentacore. Kudietsky's got options ahead of him. He's got no more because the half-time whistle has gone. It's been a fantastic match between these two. Played at a high-quality standard with some excellent football. Dejan Kudieski's goal, a bullet header after the opening strike was made by Jordan Henderson. Halfway mark, it's one apiece in what's been a brilliant first half of Premier League football. A half of football you'd feel at the moment that uh, Tottenham just slightly shaded if it was a boxing contest. Liverpool definitely didn't want half time. Kudieski looking for the run between Perisic and 
Kane. Jota into Thiago. Oh, lovely touch by Darwin Nunes. Salah, good save. No, it isn't. A penalty's been awarded for a handball by Mentecourt. What a start to the second half for Liverpool. Referee did not hesitate. That was it. The unnatural movement to the hands to flick the ball away. It was a good spot. Now Mo Salah from the spot. What a start to the second half this could be for Liverpool. Oh, bullet penalty! That was not being saved in a month for Sundays. Rifled it home. It's 2-1. And he runs straight to the manager. And all those that are supporting the North London club are livid with that decision. In the replay, you can see it's a great spot. And in the replay there, you can see that's an unsavable spot kick. Oh, some have talked about Jurgen Klopp's job being on the line in this contest. So far, his side have responded with a perfect response in the second half. Nunes. Oh, look at this by Henderson. Could this be three? It is! Spurs haven't shown up in the second half. Jordan Henderson, his second goal, a cool finish under pressure. Just catches the Reese out and Liverpool have caught Tottenham Hotspur napping in this second half. Well, Conte's responded and Basuma is on for Royale. First move by Conte to try and get his side back in the contest. Salah. Oh. The header is away from Dyer. Suma's first touch is to head it away. Only as far as Thiago Alcantara. Love the exchange of pass. Alexander Arnold. Salah's made it four! Incredible, absolutely incredible. Defensively, Tottenham Hotspur have gone to sleep in the start of this second half. And Salah, that's a trademark effort finish if ever you've seen one. Wraps his foot around it and drives it and curls it right past the goalkeeper. Well, it's the Salah and Henderson double acts. It's Liverpool four, Spurs one. Absolutely smothered off of it. Jota. Alexander Arnold. It's a poor pass to Pierre Holberg. Bentecourt. Kane. Bentecourt. Oh, Harry Kane. And that could be the start of the fight back. Or well, that could be nothing more than just a bit of consolation. Whatever you do, don't go anywhere because anything can happen in the next half hour. Played onside by Virgil van Dijk. Kane using his left foot to finish. Allison expecting the one to go near post. Doesn't expect the wrong foot to go far post. Six goals. Classic on the making, potentially. Really not at the best game, Kane, despite being on the score sheet. Nunes. Jota. Nunes, fantastic. Brilliant exchanges of passing. I think that probably ends the Spurs' comeback. That was an unstoppable hit that has flown in. A fine goal. And it is 5-2. And a change being made with Richarlison coming on and Salah being replaced by Harvey Elliott. Oh, Spurs is emptying here the top of Stadium. And you understand the frustration in this game based on that first half. You felt Spurs were shading this, but that appalling second half is what has hurt them. Richarlison. Basuma. 
Still Basuma. Kane. Son! A chance like that you feel needed to have gone in. Uh, Roberto Firmino's got the armband and Henderson has departed. So there will be no hat trick for neither one of those two players. Those fans today have enjoyed every minute of this contest. This is one of the reasons why their goalkeeper has put on an outstanding show despite the score being 5 2. Kane. There is Basuma out wide. One more for Spurs. Maybe just to reduce the arrears. And Thiago was late. And there's a deserved booking. Charleston just asking the question. Is it not more? That is a late challenge, mind you, on Bentecourt. I think that's deserved. Looks to be in the final 30 seconds of the contest. This set piece. How important will goal difference prove to be towards the end of the season, you feel? Son with a free kick. Perisic leaves it to run for Son to strike it low. And I think that just about sums up the afternoon for Spurs. Excellent in the first half. We're unlucky to only be level at the break. In the second half, though, Liverpool have put on a masterclass of how to start a half. They call their opponents napping. Salah was exceptional. The penalty may have swung things in Spurs' favour. But they took full advantage of it afterwards. It'll be an easy trip home for the Liverpool fans. Winner of a pulsating game by five goals to two. The Spurs. Uh oh. Well, well, what a fantastic performance that was by Liverpool. Absolutely blowing away uh, Spurs in the start of the second half. Definitely something that uh, we'll remember for a long time to come. Quite brilliant. Well, now let's go over to the other game that uh, took place. That was the Sunday lunchtime kickoff between Chelsea and Arsenal. A West London derby itself that always promised to be a game full, full of uh, fractures. And there's always been an element of bite between these two. In recent years, Chelsea have always got the better from Arsenal. Particularly ever since uh, Jose Mourinho arrived um, some 15 years ago. But a good time for Mikel Arteta to turn the tables. Commentary from this one comes from Trev Champion. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Premier League match between Chelsea and Arsenal. This is going to be an absolute uh, London derby effect at Stamford Bridge. You can see Abbamiak and the rest of the Chelsea players all fired up to get one over Arsenal itself. There's Ramsdale, the keeper. Uh, so they're just doing their handshakes, and here's your Chelsea lineup: Kepa in goal, your yeah, at the right back, Silver in the middle, and then Chilwell at the left back. Jorginho and Kavac on the midfield as well. Mount, Abamyang, and Sterling for that 5-2-3 formation. So we're looking forward to that. That'll be a good attacking moment for Chelsea if they can play it right. Arsenal. With that 4 2 3 1, with Ramstel at goalkeeper, then Sabia and Gabriel at the back. And you've got Saka, Odegaard, and Martinelli in that attacking mid, with uh, Gabriel Jesus in the, at the front as well. That 4 2 3 1 formation. So the Arsenal players are just gathering and trying to get a little bit of that extra start, and here we go for this epic Premier League match. At Stamford Bridge, who will win this London derby? Let's get it on! You can see everyone's just all lined up and uh, trying to get themselves ready for this kickoff at the minute. And uh, we're kicking off right here, right now. So Arsenal on the ball, trying to push on as much as they can. It's just going forward to to the left hand side and. They're keeping it now in the penalty box and it shoots! Oh! That was a chance for Arsenal to have a great start. But I tell you what, that was a great opportunity. And that was close, but 
Kepa, Kepa, Kepa kept him. So Chelsea are on the ball now at the minute. And they're trying to push on massively. And this great uh, passing now, Sterling. Out onto the left hand side to Chilwell. Can he try and do everything he can? He's passing it back. So Chelsea are keeping the ball as much as they possibly can. So here we go. Crossing it to the right hand side now and doing everything they can. Fantastic stuff. And it's just, he just can't keep their arse. So Chelsea doing fantastic stuff. And Sterling, Sterling on the ball. Passing it to Barry Oh, that was close. Great block. Great block. And Mount nearly got them into the lead. Tight affair, this London derby. But Mount could have had the opportunity, but great block. So Sterling is on the ball, trying to push on massively now onto the left hand side. Will Chua get it? Chua got it. And now passes it back. Was that offside? No, they're still going, they're still passing. They're still going right oh, now. Whoa! That was close. That was absolutely close. It looked like there was a bit of offside moment, but yeah, it was definitely offside. It hit. But that was very lucky for Arsenal. Second half at the minute. And it's a great through into the penalty box. Can they keep the possession? That's the biggest question of it all. Oh, lovely passing. Kept the ball, kept it. No. And passes it, no. He passes, shoots. Great save by Ramsdale. That was a great save on Ramsdale. He went through the legs of one of the defenders on Arsenal, but Ramsdale played it. And he'll be absolutely delighted, you can see that. So Arsenal have got the ball at the minute. TNA trying to pass it back. That was a bit of a dangerous move. And Ramsdale had to clear it away. So Arsenal still kept the ball, but the referee have called for a free kick. I think that might be a handball, to be fair. But a uh, free kick for Chelsea. So on this rainy day. At Stamford Bridge, still 0 0 after 55 minutes. Can Mount do something at this point? So Mount's going to try and cross it in and it's headed it away. But Chelsea's still got the ball. Aspera on the ball. Passed it to. Ooh, that was close, to be fair. Ooh, and still got the ball, Mount! Abamyang! Abamyang passes to Sterling! Oh, it saves! Ramsdale, that's a penalty! That's a penalty! Let me just double check. Oh my days, that's offside! Ramsdale is very lucky. So Chelsea are pushing everything they can. But that, if that didn't have the offside moment earlier on, that would have had the penalty to kick in. But they're still going. Chelsea and a shot! Oh, Ramsdale just cleanly catched it into his arms. Didn't want to move. So Arsenal are now on the ball and lovely passing. So let's see what he can try and do now. And pass it now to Saka. And now. Oh! That was close. That was close from Odegaard. And it was a great, yeah, Odigo had a great opportunity, but could not do anything about it at the minute. So, uh, Chelsea trying to clear it, but it was passing to Arsenal. Oh, uh, Mount trying to push on. Uh, passes to Sterling. Abamyang now loses it. But uh, Arsenal have won the ball back, and they're on the attack now. They're on the Chelsea half. Oh, that was a great through. And, oh, Saka! 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 Brilliant! Oh, what a goal from Arsenal! That was a rocket! Rocket of a bullet! But it was great play, great attacking. And I thought that was a bit of offside, but no! He was just onside. I suppose Greta just let him on. But Chihuahua should have caught Saka. But what a goal! Kappa could not do anything about it at all. That is a brilliant goal. And 1-0 to the Gunners. 
Jubilant scenes for Saka. Chelsea have gone really quiet. Can they bounce back? So Chelsea have to do everything they can to put the pressure on. And they have been doing since that restart. So Sterling trying to pass it on to the right side to Mount. Mount to Espelicueta. And he loses the ball. But can he bounce back? No, Arsenal got the ball back. But Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus has got the ball. He's still got the ball. He's, got, he's still got the ball. On the left hand side. When he passes it. He passes it back. And now. Oh my god. No. Sucker. Sucker. Oh no. He's just missed an open goal. He's just missed an open goal. It was a great save on Kappa. But Saka. Oh, I tell you what. That could have knocked Chilwell's head off. But Chelsea. Few minutes left of the match. They need to do something. They're on the attack. This might be their final attack. Abamyang! Abamyang! Oh no! Mount! Oh, it's our corner! I think Mount is fuming! No, it's not a corner. It is a goal kick to Arsenal. Arsenal could take away the three points. All Rams has to do is just take it easy. <laughs> So Arsenal didn't had an unbelievable moment. Can they win the derby? But Ch Chelsea are still heading it away back to Arsenal in their half. And the referee has blown the whistle. And Arsenal won at Stamford Bridge. What a match to be fair. So many unbelievable moments. But Chelsea, they've had a few opportunities to get themselves into winning moments. But unfortunately for them, they could not capitalise. Saka, as you can see on screen, three attempts, one goal, and done that absolutely brilliant, to be fair. And what a goal, to be fair. Fantastic stuff. And full time at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea nil, Arsenal one. Well, there we go. What a fantastic performance that was. Uh, let's go ahead and let's... Uh, Round up and check out all the other goals that took place uh, over yesterday and today. Leeds United and Bournemouth playing out a game which was uh, settled by such cool margins. Dominic Solanke's early penalty gave Bournemouth the lead, a lead which they thoroughly deserved on the balance of play. A handball in the blocks was proved to be the Achilles heel and Melier was sent the wrong way. As the first half wore on, it was still the case of Melier versus Bournemouth. This 1-1 here brilliantly saved. The Leeds United goalkeeper pulled out a string of top-class saves. This 1-1 with Solanke was of real quality to react as late as he did. And there were more saves to make. A Bournemouth corner was floated into the area. The header was true. Once again, there was Melier. Another save for Leeds United. Ellen Road absolutely stunned at the moment. They're very much from far behind. Amazing from a side which had just beaten Liverpool a week ago. But there was some luck back. Jack Harrison's penalty was able to bring the scores level in the second half. Fouled in the box, he was able to slot the penalty home coolly and calmly. And Jesse March's side were back on it. And then the game starts to open out with the score apiece and chances arrive for either side to try and find the winner game. Jaden Ante had a golden opportunity which he's probably going to have nightmares about. Through one on one and goal, he's pulled his shot just where he needs it to be past the goalkeeper and just an inch past the post. And then Leeds United had themselves another chance to win the game. Play through a vicious strike that was end up to be wildly off target. In this situation, you've got to feel it's going to be a lot better there, there from Christensen. But there was to be late drama in the contest. Robin Cock in the air committed a foul right in the 90th minute and suddenly Dominic Solanke found himself with a penalty. Don't think anyone in Leeds will be buying Robin Cock a pint tonight. But the only runner from a Bournemouth fan may be buying Solanke. With the opportunity again, he's coolly slotted his penalty home, beaten Melier. Well, they can only beat Melier from 12 yards, but it's a priceless win for Bournemouth. They're winners full time by two goals to one. And in the end, on the balance of play, you'd probably say it's just about deserved. Manchester City knew it would be a tough game without Erling Haaland. Well, it wasn't a tough game at all. A brilliant start as well allowed Rian Maris to get the opening goal. Winning the ball back and charging through the heart of the Bournemouth defence. Nothing can stop the young man as he bursts his way through. 
Top goal scorer for Manchester City last season. Showed he's still got that minus touch in front of goal, blasting it past Burt Leno. And then it became a chance for a £100 million man to show what he's capable of. Jack Grealish found himself in the right place at the right time, but consistency and hard work pays off from here. One-on-one, -on -one, a cool pass across goal. Jack Grealish presented with one of his easier goals to score in his career. But there was a chance for Mitrovic to get on the score sheet. He's got a habit of that at the moment. Able to dance his way through the Manchester City defence. Lovely little dummy, just able to take it all the way past, um, in the end, Ruben Neves. And the fiery right-footed shot was too good for Edison. But there was a chance for Manchester City to respond, and then it arrived. An effort which was brilliantly saved in the first effort there by Leno. It was down to Jack Grealish to go ahead and pop away the rebound. Gondayan will probably think, how on earth did I hit that right at the keeper? Jack Gillish should be thinking, how on earth am I getting an unopened goal to shoot from? In the second half, Fulham decided to push forward and very nearly found their way through. Mitrovic's effort was well saved here by Edison. He was allowed far too much room and it definitely angered Pep Guardiola. As the second half wore on, Fulham thought they got themselves back into the contest at 3-2. This effort here saved and tapped in, but the flag was raised instantly. In real time, it looked as if Fulham had been robbed. But on the replays, it is shown that there was a real obvious offside that was well uh, picked up by the linesman. You'll see it here. Naked eye, you would have missed that flick on. Great decision. And that was enough to spur Manchester City to kill the game off. The cross was brilliant. There was David Silva to fire the ball, Bernardo Silva as I should say, to fire the ball home. Great work from Walker, a lovely curling cross. There goes Bernardo to slot the ball into the back of the net. Leno no chance. Manchester City winners by four goals to one. Being very comfortable, calm and controlled as they look to challenge for the Premier League. The city ground hasn't been the happiest of place in Nottingham Forest this season, but in truth today, nobody would be satisfied from this opportunity. A game in which both sides created chances, but really didn't create anything of quality in that final third. Dennis's effort here just showing that it wasn't going to be Forrester's day. There were chances for Brentford. Ivan Tony's radar let him down in the vital moments when he was through one-on-one. -on -one. He'll look back at this and say he should have done a lot better. A man that was picked to potentially be in the England 55. And there were final chances in the end of the game to settle it. And this time it was Dean Henderson that was the hero. Mikhail Damsgaard found himself through. Struck, hit the ball and hit it true. But Henderson reacted quickly and was just able to palm it away at the last second. 0-0. Wolverhampton Wanderers had to work but eventually were able to find a way past Brighton and Hove Albion. But they had to wait a long time in the contest. And they did create lots of chances it has to be said. They just weren't able to take them. The goalkeeper today, it has to be said, Sanchez for Brighton was on excellent form. This effort here just showing what a fine stop and what a fine keeper reputation he's built for himself on the south coast. Wolverhampton continued to make the chances. This effort from Mantinho was parried away by Sanchez. If at first you don't succeed, have a go again. Exactly what the Portuguese player thought. Questions were asked though whether that shot was on target. Sanchez was taking no chances. And when Sanchez wasn't bitty, Josie Saar was. This effort here when Danny Welbeck was played through was a golden opportunity in the end for Brighton Hove Albion. Danny Welbeck though went, was probably say his weaker foot. Saar able to make a comfortable save. And there were still chances available for Wolves to have a go at goal and there was still a chance for Sanchez to make quality save after quality save. This one here just showing that you don't always have to go with the correct hand so to speak. You just got to parry it away. But there was a chance in the end for Wolves to go ahead and get the deadlock. And Gidez got it with three minutes to go. Played through, a lovely little dummy allowed him to take the ball round Velton. And it brought himself some valuable time to narrow the angle. And then when it comes to beating Sanchez, he took no chance and found the back of the net with a true rifled strike. 1-0 to Wolves. In the Saturday evening kickoff, Everton and Leicester City showed that there was still some quality of football to be played. Even though at the end of the day, the outstanding players looked to be the goalkeepers. Jamie Vardy here finding half a yard and getting a shot past Tarkovsky. But in the end, what looks to be England's number one, making a comfortable stop. It was then Everton's turns to find a chance. What's his name? Oh, it's Unana who's got the opening goal. A lovely little cross in the end by Gray. Chips perfectly into the area. A diving header to show that sometimes some things in the game aren't to be missed. A brilliant effort past Ward.
and then became some controversial penalties. Dominic Calvert-Lewin was able to score the penalty quite coolly and calmly in the end. Referee decided to give a foul in the box for handball. It became a common theme and it almost threatened to ruin the game. But at 2-0 up, Everton weren't making any complaints and Calvert-Lewin showing some real coolness under pressure. But a foul that was committed by Conor Cody on Jamie Vardy changed that all later on. Referee rightly pointed in the spot and Yuri Tielemans this time blasting the ball to the top right-hand corner of the goalkeeper. Never even moved Jordan Pickford. He's got a reputation of saving some vital penalties but here the Belgium international spot kick was just about perfect. Still, anything Tielemans could do that Calvert-Lewin could do just as well. Another handball in the box. Another chance to score from 12 yards. Another chance which Calvert-Lewin took gleefully. Opposite corner this time. Again, another inch-perfect penalty kick. There was time for Tillemans to score another spot kick and get things back in. This time, another handball. Yes, thank you, FIFA. But don't worry, Tillemans here powering this one. One thing to note, Pickford moving just a fraction too late. Tillemans striking it back for 3-2. Uwe Enri's first game at home was at Manchester United and the way in which United had been playing it looked like it could be a good game for Aston Villa to find their feet it wasn't to be though Manchester United showed why they have improved so much at Eric Ten Hag recently Jaden Sancho through able to slot the balls are past Emilio Martinez with ease one big game two when Rashford had a chance to take a penalty and hopefully was able to go ahead and ghost the demons of the Euro 2020 final this time there was no stutter, there was a trueness to the conviction, and there was the second goal. A lovely pass in the end from Eriksen allowed Anthony to find his way through. The Brazilian's cool finish, a trademark of his, absolutely settled the match you'd feel. Manchester United 3-0 up and in control early on at uh, Villa Park. But Aston Villa were able to fire back and get themselves back into the contest. And it was their skipper that did it. Tyrone Ming's brilliant control here and swivel to volley the ball past David Tahir before he can even move it gave Aston Villa hope. And sometimes it's the hope that kills you in football. But Ming's here showed some real quality and a good tidy finish to go ahead and bring the score at 3-1. And then it arrived at 3-2 when Ollie Watkins was fouled in the box. It was his chance to take a spot kick. He blasted it low and David De Gea just wasn't able to react quick enough and 3-2. Aston Villa started to throw players forward and started to see if they could go ahead and force what some thought would be an improbable equaliser. But Manchester United held on and if this was the reason why. Jacob Ramsey's brilliant strike fantastically parried away by David De Gea. In real time you wouldn't be able to spot this save with the naked eye. Once it's slowed down, that could be one of the most important saves you're going to see this season. It spurred Manchester United on and enabled them to go ahead and find an equaliser. And it was controversial scenes that did it. Ronaldo's effort was deflected back. And when it arrived back in path of Christian Eriksen, he just stuck out a leg and slotted it home. Replay showed he was onside by a good two yards. At 4-2, Manchester United were in control. Upset Cristiano Ronaldo. He went ahead and sealed the three points for them. A lovely little dummy inside the box. Great touch from the man which many have said has underperformed this season. I'll tell you what, in this uh, FIFA 23, he surely hasn't. And Manchester United were winners by five goals to two. Newcastle United have been the surprise package in the Premier League, looking like they're almost in a place for a Champions League spot. But Southampton gave him a really good game down at uh, St Mary's. This effort here from James Ward-Prowse, a curling free kick which the Wolves dive for. He found the tiniest gap and the former Burnley goalkeeper able to make the save. And it became more of the same as Southampton creating chances. Another great save there by Pope. Doing him no harms a go of getting back into the England squads. James Ward-Prowse will be thinking that perhaps his time may have passed to play for England in a major tournament. But there were chances for Newcastle United. This excellent header by Callum Wilson was fantastically saved on the line. Really was a top-class stop. Callum Wilson, one of the most formed players in the country. Some have even said he may even take Harry Kane's place. And there was more chances for Newcastle had a go. And there was more heartache in the end for Wilson. This downward header was brilliantly parried. Goalkeeper and post was proving to be what was the pinnacle moment in this contest. Just parried away at the last second. There was a chance for one more for Southampton to try and win the game. When Armstrong found Che Adams in the box, the Scotsman going with his left foot ended up dragging it wide and it was parried away by Pope that had a fine game for them. Sometimes you're not going to win them all, 
has come over a point will be a good performance for Newcastle the London derby down at the London Stadium allowed two sides to play some quality football and it was Crystal Palace that stunned the game in the end especially when Edouard was played through a lovely little pass it has to be said split the West Ham defenders completely in two and an early strike and a quality strike it has to be said Fabianski no chance Q West Ham creating chances and not taking them seemed to be a common theme in the end this effort from Antonio looked like it was a poor chance reality though it was brilliant reactions there from Gator to tip it away Vincent Gator himself had a quality game and definitely had a lot to celebrate in his own personal performance this effort from Suchek proving just how informed he was in the get game Antonio laying it back Suchek strike this true a real old-fashioned daisy cutter here that was a fine save but in the end West Ham United were able to find their way through for now is crossing the box and nobody picked up Ben Rama to equalize four minutes before half time a lovely little pass from Cresswell allowed Fornells to flick it with the outside of his foot and in all the space in the world was Ben Rama who said thank you very much nothing Gator could do about that but there was something Vincent Gator do about another chance right before half time this outstanding save here reminiscent that of Banks you could potentially say a downward header from Ben Rama that had Gator beaten all ends up it looked like apart from this last second reaction to parry the ball away but there was to be last minute drama in this contest also and it came on from the West End substitute genuinely Schmacker was able to strike the ball true and like an arrow pass Gator to give all three points to West Ham in the end never any doubt for a man that's made a real impact from the bench this season and from West Ham United who are winners at this London derby by two goals to one well after all that let's go ahead and confirm the Premier League table for the end and amazing for us here 2-5-2 two, two performances both going to the away side standing out just two nil nil draws but other than that it was a Premier League weekend filled with some uh, great games and some great goals and the bottom half of the table oh, it's all looking trouble for Forrest Leicester and Aston Villa you wouldn't want to be in the Midlands at the moment seem to be struggling but bearing in mind three points separate the uh, bottom 15 the Premier League survival race is starting to heat up as for the top of the table, Arsenal remain top, go back ahead of Manchester City by two points after City's win against Fulham yesterday. Spurs maintain their third spot, but Manchester United leap from Newcastle to move into fourth spot. Liverpool, after that win, climb up to seventh. Oh, another weekend of Premier League football. Just one more to go but until the World Cup. But don't worry. Hopefully we'll be able to get that out and we'll be able to join us some more. And watch out for some changes as FIFA slowly adapts. And this anti-cheat thing is shoved well and truly in the bin. There's FIFA mods on the way. There's also more Premier League match Trevor Day on the way. So we hope you will be joining us for all of those. For everyone else, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.